Welcome to our walk-in cooler. If you clicked on this video, then you probably have already realized that a cold room is one of the best investments you can make in your own food security. But we don't just want to dig a hole in the earth and hope that it stays cool enough, or hope that it doesn't accidentally freeze our food in the wintertime. If we want to actually be able to count on this cold room, then we need to be able to control the temperature in here. Now we've been using this cold room to store our garden produce on a year-round basis for nearly a decade now, and in that time we've used three different methods to keep this room at a constant temperature. These methods include automated vents, a window air conditioner, and most recently an air source heat pump that pulls heat out of this room and puts it into our home's hot water tank. Now all of these methods work, but they each have different strengths and weaknesses. So in this video, I'm going to break down the basic installation requirements for each of these methods so you can decide which method is going to be the best fit in your situation. Let's get started. So the first cooling method that I've introduced already is just the method of using two automated vents. We need two vents because we want air to flow in and flow out at the same time. There's no other air exchange in this room, so we have to allow air to flow in both directions. And I found that it really helps to have a fan blowing air in both directions to make sure the air is flowing the way we want as well. So even though these vents look a little different, one is long and one is short, they both have a fan and a backdraft damper inside. It looks like this. So there's the backdraft damper that only opens when airflow is initiated by the fan. And right behind that we've got an inline fan that will turn on whenever our thermostat tells it to. So I've got a couple of different backdraft dampers and fans here. Depending on which ones you order they may or may not tuck in really nicely together like that. I've had to tape other ones together because they don't fit inside one another nicely. I don't know if there's a way to figure out the, the exact fit before you actually order them. All we need to control these two fans is a single thermostat that we've got on the other side of the room here. This is just one of the standard Inkbird temperature controllers that I talk about often and we'll use for all of our cooling methods today. When I plug the fans into the cooling port here, the thermostat will give power to the fans whenever the temperature in the room here is too warm thereby drawing in cold air from outside and dropping the temperature in the room. As soon as the temperature in the room here gets below 4 degrees, which is our usual setting here, it'll cut power to the fans and no more air will come into the room. The backdraft dampers that I showed you will shut and it'll just sit idle until the temperature warms gradually again, at which point the fans will turn on. Same simple process there. No other mechanical devices to control, just the two vents, two backdraft dampers, controlled by one thermostat. The vents that I've got here did not come with our building. There is concrete most of the way around this space here, but we were lucky to have a window here, and that is the hole that we used to make the vents. So we filled that basement window in, insulated it, and that window opening made it really easy for me to install these two vents, which would have been pretty tricky if I had to start hammering my way through concrete. So that's all you need for the first method of automated vent control. The second cooling method that I'll share with you is the window air conditioner. This is, I assure you, just a standard window air conditioner. It looks normal, but we've pulled that front grill off and we're going to make a couple of modifications to this air conditioner because even though it's totally powerful enough to cool this small room down to our refrigerator temperature of 4 degrees usually, they're all programmed to go down to a minimum of 17 degrees Celsius, which is, yeah, it's fine for a cool room, but not for this room. So we need to override that control system in order to get our desired temperature. So what we look for behind this back panel is this little temperature sensor. This is what's telling the air conditioner when it's time to turn on and off. We need to intervene with this sensor so that it thinks it's warmer in this room than it actually is. And the way what we do that is by adding a little bit of heat right on top of this sensor so that we trick it into thinking it's warmer. And a light bulb is the perfect tool for that. So we've got a light bulb up here. I'm just going to tuck the sensor in and our thermostat right now is telling the light bulb to turn on because the room is too warm. And that light bulb will tell the sensor that it's too warm in here also and the air conditioner will turn on as a result. Now, I've unplugged the air conditioner right now just so it's a little quieter in here, but that's what would be happening. So this temperature controller and light bulb 
can do the entire job of controlling the air conditioner, telling it when to turn on and when to turn off. We just need one extra precaution in the use of the air conditioner to make sure that the system runs flawlessly. And that is a, an extra backup temperature controller to cut power to this system here whenever the fins on the front here start to ice up because these fins will be operating at times below freezing and if we don't intervene moisture in the air will freeze on these fins and prevent airflow and then the whole thing gets frozen solid and airflow stops and your cooling power gets lost entirely so we can't afford that kind of failure so we've got an extra sensor here attached to this temperature controller and this temperature controller is set to one degree so whenever these fins get below one degree Celsius, so they're just about to freeze, we cut the power to this system, the light bulb turns off, and the air conditioner goes back into just fan mode instead of cooling mode, and the system is allowed to defrost while the fins warm up again. When they get back to a more acceptable temperature above one degree Celsius, the system can turn on again, and the air conditioner can resume cooling the air in the room. So that's the system. Two temperature controllers, one light bulb, a clever repositioning of the sensor and you're set to cool your walk-in cooler with a window air conditioner. One consideration to have in mind when you are locating your walk-in cooler and your air conditioner is that there will be condensation from your air conditioner on the exterior of your cooler that will need a place to drip. It's just the nature of drawing moist warm air through a cool surface that you're going to have condensation. So just it could be as simple as a bucket, it could be a drain, in a floor that you've got in your basement, but you will need to account for that. So think about how you're gonna handle that moisture. We've just got a bucket down there and that's works fine for us. All right, we're finally ready to talk about our third cooling method. This one's my favorite by far. It is the sand in heat pump that takes heat out of the air here and transfers that heat to a liquid, in this case, water. And we can then use the heat in that water for all kinds of purposes around our home. So it's so much more efficient. So much less wasteful and it's been working really well for us so far after about six months of use at this point but it did involve some rearranging of our room as you can maybe tell if you've seen our past videos on our cold room here we have to switch some shelves around it's much bigger than our air conditioner and it has to be positioned inside the cooled room it can't be mounted inside the wall because it does all of its air exchange in this room so I bumped it on top of a shelf because we want to have it higher in our room so we don't have any hot pockets up here. And it's faced the long direction of our room so that we get maximum air circulation. Now to install this uh, heat pump, all we needed to do was run a direct 240 volt line, no switches or anything, just a direct wire to our circuit breaker. And normally these units would be controlled with a thermostat that's in a water tank. They're designed for the purpose of heating water. So usually there'd be a thermostat in the water tank that would call for heat whenever the temperature in the hot water tank got too low. So maybe below 40 degrees Celsius, for example, if it was down to 30 degrees Celsius after someone took a big shower, it would call for more heat, the unit would turn on and it would heat the water back up. In this case though, we don't care what temperature the hot water tank is. We want to make sure this room is the right temperature. So we have to turn this unit on and off based on the temperature in this room. Thankfully, these units are designed with an override option. So you can use a switch at the location here to turn the unit on and off. And to control that switch, we have also <laughs> employed our handy Inkbird temperature controller. And we've got a plug-in to that switch right here that I'll just put in that same cooling port that we've used for all of our other settings and cooling methods so far. And we can still program the Inkbird temperature controller down to four degrees or whatever temperature we want. And since I just plugged it in, you might have heard in the background here, the Sandin has just turned on as well. It's incredibly quiet considering its size. The fan is very low noise. I can't even hear it outside of our cold room. So it's just been a beauty to work with so far. Now you'll see some water lines around the room here which are associated with this unit. It's nice that we don't have to cut another hole or any hole in our wall here. So we have very little insulation weaknesses in our cold room. We just need a couple of tiny holes for our water pipes to pass through. It's getting cold right here. <laughs> Unplug it. It's gonna keep cycling for a bit until it's finished its thing. 
This secondary water line that you'll see above my head here actually runs to the front of the house and it's a heat dump. We learned in summer pretty quickly after installing this that we were getting more heat out of this room than what we could actually use. So our water tank was hot all the time and that was a problem because if the water tank gets to the point where it's 60 degrees, incredibly hot, not only is it too hot to be comfortable for us to use, this unit becomes less efficient and it loses its ability to extract more heat from this room. If it can't add heat to the water, it can't take the heat out of this air. So we needed a way to dump that heat and we didn't want to just rely on taking extra showers and extra baths and doing extra laundry as needed because we want it to be an automated thing that we never have to be thinking about. So I installed a couple of automated valves and a thermostat on the water tank out there and those valves open whenever there's too much heat. So this is a hot water line that zips out to the front lawn and waters our front lawn and our perennials out there whenever we have got extra heat that we need to dump. And that worked out nicely as a way to keep our front yard watered when we don't really want to spend time out there. The last thing I'll mention here before we head out is that we do have condensation associated with this cooling device, much like the air conditioner. Whenever, whenever we cool moist air, there's a potential for condensation and we need to collect that. So there's a drain line and a bucket down here that we just empty once in a while to make sure we're looking after that aspect. Now let's head out and look at the water heater to finish up. So the installation of the air source heat pump started with just a simple connection of two water lines to a regular water heater. So this was our old water heater that we had here. It was electric, but now it's no longer powered. It's just a water reservoir for our heat pump. And we can always see what temperature the water is at the top of the tank here. Right now it's around 30 degrees, which is a nice little boost. The incoming temperature from our soil would be between four and 10 degrees throughout the year, that's degrees Celsius. And so even now still in November when it's freezing temperatures outside, we're still getting a nice boost to that tank temperature as compared to what it would have been if it was coming right out of the earth to supply our house. But we don't want to shower necessarily with 30 degree water or 25 degree water. So for those times we've got a tankless water heater now that boosts the temperature up to the desired temperature for showering or dishes or laundry. So we've got that set to 40 degrees Celsius and we'll just top up the temperature as needed. Back in the cold room I mentioned that in summer we had lots of extra heat that we needed to dump so I'll show you the devices that we've got to control that here. Down at the bottom of the tank where we've got the coldest water we've got an aquastat that measures the water temperature and opens those automated valves at the right time. So when the temperature is at 38 degrees Celsius or hotter, this aquastat will open up this automated valve right here and the other one that's in the cold room. And those open valves will allow the extra hot water in this tank to escape outdoors and bring the tank temperature down to a reasonable level. And that little upgrade of adding those valves was such a treat for me because we weren't worrying about having to use extra hot water for showers and such throughout the summer. But I think that's all there is for the back end of this tour. Let's head back to the studio for any questions that you might have. Wait, while we're still here, we just noticed as we were leaving that the tank temperature has zipped up to 60 degrees Celsius. That's the hot water that's coming in from our little demo. We let the room warm up a little bit while we were filming in there, plugged the heat pump back in and it's just dumped its load of hot water into the tank. So it shows you just how powerful and effective that is at extracting heat from the cold room and delivering it to us in the form of hot water. There, now we're officially done. So those are the three cooling methods that we've used so far. Now that you've seen each one, which would be your top pick? Let me know in the comments below. And for more details, check out the video description below where I'll share some helpful links and also post some answers to some of the most common questions that I get about these cooling methods. Soon you too will be storing your own year-round supply of carrots. See you in the next one.